Welcome to Unit 2, Lecture 1, The Importance of Referencing. From working through Unit 1, I'm sure you're beginning to notice that the requirements of your tertiary studies will be quite different to what you experienced at school. One of the important differences is that at university you are expected to reference your work. This video will introduce you to referencing by addressing three main questions. Firstly, what is referencing? Secondly, why is referencing important in tertiary studies? And thirdly, what happens if you don't reference? Let's look at the first question. What is referencing? Referencing is identifying any thoughts, words and ideas that are not your own. In an essay or assignment, it is important to show the reader which ideas are original which means you have thought of them yourself, and which ideas, thoughts, or words you have taken from another source. Let's look at this quote from Massey University. Academic writing relies on more than just the ideas and experience of one author. It also uses the ideas and research of other sources, books, journal articles, websites, and so forth. These other sources may be used to support the author's ideas. Referencing is used to tell the reader where ideas from other sources have been used in an assignment. If we unpack this quote, we can see that it has some important information. The first sentence tells us that in tertiary studies, we are not only interested in the writer's ideas and experience, but expect the writer to draw on other sources. If you apply this to your work and some of the assignments you will submit this semester, be aware that the lecturer will be expecting to see the ideas and experience of others in your work. You will be expected to quote and reference other sources in your assignments. You will not pass academic assignments if you only include your own personal ideas and experiences, unless, of course, your lecturer specifically asks for your own experience, for example, in a reflection. The second sentence gives us some clues about what types of sources you might draw on in the course of your studies, for example, books, journal articles, websites, and so on. You might not be familiar with the term journal articles just yet. Do not panic. Unit 4 of this course will introduce you to journal articles. Here you can see that using other sources will support your ideas. Think of yourself as a lawyer trying to prove something. The sources that you draw on help to prove your point of view and work to back up or substantiate your argument. Finding out where you have got your information from serves a few important purposes. Firstly, it shows you have carried out the relevant research. Secondly, the reader is able to find your source themselves and can read further if he or she is interested. And thirdly, your reader can check if your information is up to date. You may have noticed this at the end of the paragraph. This is an example of in-text referencing, and it indicates something that I have referenced. Along with the inverted commas, it shows that these words are not my own, but come from Massey University. The year 2012 shows that this was written in 2012. Remember to check the reference page at the end of this presentation to see if I have included the full reference. The next question we want to answer is why is referencing important in tertiary studies? At school, you might have been asked to include a bibliography at the end of an essay. This can be considered a very basic form of referencing. However, at university level, it becomes far more important. There are a few reasons why referencing is important. Firstly, you need to place your ideas within a context. You are not the first students to ever study teaching. You might have opinions on an aspect of teaching, such as homework, but these ideas need to be placed within a context. What is a context? Context is defined by the Cambridge Dictionary as the situation within which something exists or happens and that can help explain it. Therefore, if you're talking about homework, you would need to locate your ideas within the context or situation. For example, you might need to explain that you are talking about South Africa specifically, or perhaps a rural or urban school. You might like to explain the phase that you are talking about, for example, foundation phase or intermediate phase. 
All of these will give your reader information about the context. As UNSW says, by citing experts in your field, you are showing your marker that you are aware of the field in which you are operating. You are showing your marker that you are aware that you are not the first and only person to have ideas or opinions about homework. In this way, it strengthens your argument. For example, you could feel that homework should be banned. If you say this in an assignment, it is only your voice or your opinion saying this. However, if you draw on other sources who also say that homework should be banned, and perhaps these sources have solid research that prove that homework is not useful, your argument will be much stronger. Thirdly, you are contributing to the wider academic discourse in your field. In tertiary studies, you need to think of yourself as contributing to the wider academic thought in your area. If you go on to complete an honours, master's or doctorate, then your ideas, words and thoughts might be referenced by others. Finally, referencing is important so that the reader can find your source. If someone wants to verify your reference or read further information from it, they can find the original source by looking at the details on the reference page. So what happens if you don't reference? If you don't reference, you will be guilty of plagiarism. What is plagiarism? It is purposefully or accidentally passing off someone else's ideas, thoughts or words as your own. In short, it is cheating. If you take someone's phone, then you are guilty of theft. In the same way, if you take someone else's words and write them in an assignment as if they are your words, then you are guilty of theft or plagiarism. It is really risky to do this at Embry or at any other tertiary institution. When you submit an assignment, you'll be required to put your work through Turnitin, which will check it for plagiarism. So if you copy words directly from a book, article or website, this will come up on Turnitin. And if your plagiarism percentage is too high, your assignment will not be marked and you will receive zero. So in short, and to avoid plagiarism, learn to reference correctly. Referencing is not hard, it just takes an element of care. It is also worth spending a bit of time learning how to reference correctly, as most of your assignments at Embry have around 10% awarded to correct referencing. So learning how to reference correctly should earn you plenty of marks over the years that you study here. But do not panic. The next few videos will take you through how to reference a variety of sources. Of course, as a good lecturer, you will find my reference list at the end of the lecture. Do you remember the quote from Massey University? I showed you the in-text reference, and you can find the full reference here on the reference page. But more about that in the next video.